Chapter 1866, Kang Shu. The faces of all who were present twisted up at Kang Shitin's words, and even their lips had started to twitch. HMPH. Kai Wu Ao's voice immediately turned cold. God Emperor Shitin, you are allowed to act the fool, but if you dare to sully his magnificence's name, that will be an unforgivable sin. Kang Shitin swiftly sank to his knees and exclaimed in a solemn voice, I do not dare. However, I would request your magnificence and your majesty to make your intentions clear. When it comes to my ten directions deep sea realm. Yun Che turned to look at Kai Wu Ai Ao. What exactly was she planning to do to the ten directions deep sea realm? Even he was not aware of what she was scheming up this time. Kai Wu Ai Ao had not spoken to him privately about it before, this, so it was clear that she hadn't wanted him to reject it outright. However, it was at this moment that his eyes suddenly turned sharp before he looked toward the southeast. A vast array of auras had generated a huge storm behind them as they swiftly zoomed toward this place. It was a group of not more than a hundred people, but every aura was at the Divine Master Realm. There were even two, God Emperors leading the group. This was undoubtedly a terrifying assembly of power that would sweep over any location like a tidal wave. However, this vast and abnormally strong group of auras was clearly filled with a deep panic and fear. The closer they grew, the more flustered and scared they became. It practically seemed as if these people thought that they were flinging themselves into a deep abyss of doom. It was the divine masters from the Xuanyuan realm and purple micro realm. Even though a day had already passed, one could still taste the dense tang of dragon blood in the air a smell that pierced the hearts and souls of the divine masters from both king realms. The mound of tattered dragon corpses shocked them even more, but it was the mounded head of the dragon monarch that, nearly made their bladders burst from fright. Their legs started shuddering crazily and uncontrollably. Thud! Even though they were still far away, the Xuanyuan god emperor and the purple micro god emperor fell heavily to the ground and landed on their knees. They count out and yelled, the troops from the Xuanyuan realm and purple micro realm have arrived late, we beg your magnificence and your majesty for forgiveness. It is our utter fortune and blessing that you are still both safe and sound. Your divine might stretches over the world and you trampled over the king realms of the west, cutting down the calamity that almost befell you. The atrocious demonic dragons have all fallen by your hand and all the universe will now be in the palms of your hands. Your might will stretch through, all the ages and cover the heavens themselves for all eternity. It was an acknowledgement of their sins, words of fatuous praise, and oaths of loyalty rolled all in one. However, one could clearly hear the increasing violent trembling in both of the God Emperor's voices. Long Bei's head was mounted barely a kilometer away from them. The Divine Power Inheritors and Divine Master Level Elders of both king realms had all fallen to their knees as well. Not a single one of them dared to display their usual common arrogance. The divine masters of four king realms of the west had all been exterminated, and this included the mightiest king realm of them all, the dragon god realm. This news was so frightening that none of them could even bring themselves to believe it at first. Kai Wu Ai Ao's devilish eyes quietly turned towards them her ice-cold gaze slowly sweeping over their bodies. You've certainly chosen the right time to arrive. The eyes of the Xuanyuan God Emperor and Purple Micro God Emperor widened into saucers as their bodies tensed up like coiled springs. The Xuanyuan God Emperor immediately pressed his forehead against the ground as he practically prostrated himself, before Yun Che and Kai Wu Ai Ao. The Dragon Monarch. Oh no. I meant that dastardly demonic dragon of the western region. His actions and movements were simply far too sudden. Once I heard the news, I immediately prepared for battle and rushed over at full speed, but I did not expect the divine might of the devil master and devil queen to be so powerful that you would only need a single short date to trample over these wicked dragons. The purple micro god emperor quickly followed up, on the day the southern sea god realm fell. We already threw ourselves at the feet of the Devil Master. The heavens and earth can stand as witnesses to our loyalty. It is as bright as the light of the sun and the moon. However, however, 
We did not manage to reinforce our master in time and it was solely due to our incompetence. I am too ashamed to even look for an excuse and I willingly await his magnificence's punishment. The two mighty god emperors prostrated themselves before Yun Che as they blabbered tearfully. They didn't possess a single iota of their usual dignity as god emperors at the moment. Every single one of the divine power inheritors and elders behind them wore extremely complex looks on their faces as they witnessed their god emperor's undignified and shameful behavior. In their last meeting, the two god emperors had been forced to bow their heads as a stopgap measure to prevent Yun Che from destroying them. However, today's situation was entirely different from their last meeting. The previous humiliation they had been forced to endure now seemed like a most blessed and fortunate choice in this moment. They had chosen to be neutral observers in the grand battle between the West and the North, neither helping Long Bei or Yun Che. As such, even if Yun Che did choose to punish them, it would most likely not result in their annihilation. Your Magnificence, how should we deal with them? Kai Wu Ai Ao asked. Yun Che's eyebrows briefly knitted together before he barked, out a cold and curt command, spare the useful ones and kill the useless scum. We're definitely useful. Definitely useful. Yun Che's words ran through the two god emperors like a bolt of lightning. They anxiously exclaimed, Every living creature in the Xuani Uan realm awaits the Devil Master's command. We will not have a single regret or complaint even if you order us to our deaths. The line, of the Purple Micro Realm will serve the Devil Master with loyalty for all eternity. Xuani Uan Realm, Purple Micro Realm, hear me, Kai Wu Ai Ao said in a quiet and composed voice. The two god emperors immediately fell silent the moment the first words built from her lips. I will give you five months. You are to continue eradicating the remnants of the Southern Sea bloodline while also getting every upper star realm king in the Southern Divine region to kneel before Yun Che and swear their loyalty to him. All of this must be accomplished within the next five months. When the Xuani Uan God Emperor and Purple Micro God Emperor lifted their heads to look at Kai Wu Ai Ao, their faces were filled with extreme gratitude. If you can accomplish these two simple tasks in the next five months, you will survive without losing a single hair on your heads. But if you can't, HMPH, there really isn't any reason to keep around useless sinners, is there? Five months. All of the upper star realms in the southern divine region. The Xuani Uan God Emperor and Purple Micro God Emperor's scalps went numb as their hearts cried out in dismay but they did not dare voice a single complaint or attempt to, even negotiate with Kai Wu Ai Ao. Instead, they obediently said, We understand. We will commit all of our effort to accomplishing these tasks. Oh, that's right, Kai Wu Ai Ao continued. If you do meet any stubborn fools, there's no need to waste too much time on them. Just smash in their skulls. However, you also need to remember this. Even though his magnificence once saved the universe, he ended up being betrayed by it and everyone in it. Now that he finally reigns supreme, he could have chosen to vent his hatred on the world for their crimes against him. However, he, in his infinite compassion, chose to give the world peace instead. Unfortunately, there are some foolish people in star realms that are simply too pig-headed to acknowledge this. Not only are they not grateful to his, Magnificence, they even want to go against the decree of heaven and cause chaos in the land. You were just unable to overlook this, so you chose to punish them in order to maintain peace and security in the southern divine region. None of this has anything to do with his magnificence, do you understand? We understand, we understand. The Xuani Uan God Emperor and Purple Micro God Emperor hurriedly nodded their heads as tension began to bleed out of their hearts they could kill the ones who refused to listen. This allowance had actually made their task far easier. This is the chance that His Magnificence is bestowing upon you. You had better not mess this up. After she finished speaking, Kai Wu Ai Ao no longer deigned to even look at them. She turned toward Kang Shitten. Kang, Shitten, upon the Devil Master's suggestion, I am appointing you our Keeper of Order, someone second only to me and His Magnificence himself. Your job will be to pacify any and all rebellions against this new world order. 
the three words keeper of order fiercely pricked at King Shitten's nerves. He instantly understood what his role was and all of the blood in his body started boiling like, raging lava. A look of deep gratitude and excitement appeared on his face as he bowed and said, I thank your magnificence and your majesty for this favor. I will definitely devote my entire existence to preserving order in this world. I will exterminate every demon and monster that would seek to disturb our newfound peace. The hearts of the Xuanyu and God Emperor and Purple Micro God Emperor, who, were still prostrated on the ground, were filled with shock as, looks of admiration and envy crossed their faces. King Shitten was now only second to the Devil Master and Devil Queen, and he had even been bestowed the title of Keeper of Order something which would fill the hearts of all who heard it with both extreme terror and pensive introspection. This meant that he practically possessed a level of power and authority that put him above the rest of the, universe, a status that even exceeded his previous title of God Emperor. Kai Wu I Ao continued, six months from now, during His Magnificence's Grand Coronation Ceremony, we will officially bestow this title upon you. We will also begin to form the squad that you will command at that time. King Shitten, His Magnificence has not only forgiven you of your previous sins, he has even decided to put such, faith and trust in you. You had better not let him down. Of course, King Shitten replied in a voice filled with gratitude. After that, he asked, since I will be devoted to helping the Devil Master and Devil Queen maintain order in the universe, I won't be able to lead Den Direction's deep sea realm. Regarding the one who will succeed me. Do your magnificence and your majesty have any thoughts, on that? Kai Wu Ai Ao always found it refreshing when she spoke to someone who was quick on the uptake. This meant that she did not need to waste any superfluous words on them. She immediately replied, within a month, I want you to transfer your position as deep sea god emperor to your royal sister, Kang Shu. This name immediately caused Kang Shitten's eyes to tremble violently. Kai An Yinger instantly frowned. Her? Kang Shitten naturally bowed his head as he swiftly shook the look of utter shock from his eyes. He replied in a perfectly calm voice, to think that my sister Shu would be shown such favor. What an honor and blessing. However, your majesties may not know this, but Shu has been frail and ill since birth. Not only is her profound cultivation weak, she is also, ill-versed in the ways of this world. She can't even inherit our deep-sea divine power. I would dare say that she is the candidate least suited to this position among my many brothers, sisters, and even my children. Kai Wu I Ao let out a dry chuckle. If I say she is suitable, then she is suitable. You only need to pass your throne to her. There is no need for you to pass her the deep-sea divine pearl as well. After all, she is only going to be emperor in name. You, King Shitten, will still be the true ruler of the Ten Directions Deep Sea Realm. As such, her true capability is entirely irrelevant to this discussion. As for her incompatibility with the Deep Sea Divine Power, that is something that you need not worry about. His magnificence will naturally make her compatible with it, after all, we can't allow the Ten Directions Deep Sea Realm to have a God Emperor who hasn't inherited the Deep Sea Divine Power in its history books. So for Kang Shu, this is also the fulfillment of a grand wish and blessing upon her, isn't it? I see. Kang Shitten bowed deeply toward them. Then I will obey. Within a month, I will transfer my position as Deep Sea God Emperor to Shu. I also want to take this opportunity to give my utmost thanks to your majesties on behalf of Shu. Thank you for showing her such favor. He bowed his head deeply, so no one could see his pupils narrowing in shock and confusion. They only heard the intense gratitude in his voice, and not the sound of his teeth lightly chattering. Do I need to give you any further instructions on what you need to do? Kai Wu Ai Ao said with a soft laugh. Kang Shitten immediately replied, once she has inherited the throne, I will find a suitable time to announce that she will also become a concubine of the Devil Master and that the Ten Directions Deep Sea Realm would be joined to the Devil Master forevermore. Very good. Kai Wu Ai Ao gave a slow nod of her head. You are indeed worthy of His Magnificence's trust, and confidence. Yun Che had caught both Kang Shitten's momentary loss of control and Kai An Yinger's strange reaction. 
he immediately sent a sound transmission to Kai Anyinger. What is so special about this Kang Shu? Kai Anyinger glanced at him and replied, to put it simply, she is a woman of the deep sea realm that Kang Shin desperately wants every outsider to forget ever existed, even I had very nearly forgotten about her. To think that she was still alive. And that Kai Wu I Ao actually managed to dig this information up. <coughs> Yun Che furrowed his brow. Who exactly is this person? Kai Anyang asked, now that you have seen Kang Shitin's true personality, do you think that he really wanted to become the deep sea god emperor? Yun Che thought about it for a second, before replying, given everything that I've witnessed so far, I really must say that he really isn't compatible with the title god emperor. Even though the title of god emperor was the ultimate symbol of status and power, it was also something that fettered anyone who inherited the title. This was because every action and every word, every attitude and every posture that a god emperor adopted, would represent their king realm and even an entire divine region at times. Given Kang Shin's personality, being bound to something was definitely the one thing that he hated the most. That's right. According to Kai and Fanshin's memories, Kang Shitin had not been the original successor to the throne of the Ten Directions Deep Sea Realm. He had forcefully grabbed it by using every and all, means at his disposal and the main reason behind his ruthless and despicable behavior was his sister, Kang Shu. Why? Yun Che asked. During the years he had spent in the God Realm, he had never heard anyone mention the name Kang Shu even once. Kai and Yinger sifted through the memories of Kai and Fanshin which had already started to become blurry, before replying, as the son of the, previous deep sea god emperor's concubine, the status of both Kang Shitin and his mother was not high. However, Kang Shitin not only showed astounding potential since his youth, he even managed to resonate with the deep sea divine pearl when he reached a thousand years of age. However, this also aroused fear and apprehension in his eldest brother. He was afraid that Kang Shitin would threaten his position as the deep sea realm's crown prince, so he plotted to assassinate him before he inherited his deep sea divine powers. However, this assassination attempt was foiled by Kang Shitin's mother, and she was also badly wounded in the process. Furthermore, she was pregnant at that time, so she passed from this world after she barely managed to give birth to her daughter. Right before she, died, his mother did not entrust her daughter to the deep sea god emperor, who had barely any feelings for her in the first place. Instead, she entrusted the infant girl to her brother, Kang Shitin. I heard that it was after this event that he started calling himself Shitin. The corner of Kai and Yinger's lips twitched in mirth before she continued, this may sound rather ridiculous to you, but he was also the one who gave Kang Shu her name. To think that someone who called himself Shitin would actually give his own blood sister the name Shu. What a joke this was. 1, so he did all of this just to fulfill his mother's dying wish? Yun Che found this quite hard to believe. A mad dog like Kang Shitin, someone who could barely contain his desire to piss on every rule and law, written in the universe, was actually such a filial and faithful person. Kai Anyinger continued, because she was badly wounded during the assassination attempt, Kang Shu was born with many serious ailments. Her body was extremely frail and if not for the protection of her brother, who had already become a sea god by then, she probably wouldn't have lived past a hundred years of age, unfortunately, this sickly princess just so happens to be as beautiful as she is frail. Kai Anyinger gave a soft snort before she continued her account. It's rumored that that lustful devil Nan Wanchen actually saw her during one of her rare public appearances. After that, he shamelessly visited the Ten Directions Deep Sea Realm more than 20 times over the next three years and a rumor, soon sprang up from it. The rumor was that the Deep Sea God Emperor was going to marry Kang Shu to Nan Wanjing as his queen. As his queen? Yun Che's eyebrows twitched violently. Becoming a queen and becoming a concubine were two totally different concepts altogether. Furthermore, this was the Southern Divine Region's number one king realm. He had actually visited the Ten Directions Deep Sea, realm over 20 times in the span of three years, making his infatuation practically comparable to his thousand-year chase of Kai Anyinger. That's right, Kai Anyinger replied. 
you can well imagine just how obsessed Nan Wanshing was with Kang Xu. However, a strange and sudden event occurred a short two months after that rumor started to spread. Kang Xing used some unknown means to wrest control of the deep sea divine pearl from the deep sea god emperor. Then, he forced his father to step down from the throne and took it for himself. After Kang Shitin was made emperor, he immediately announced that Kang Shu had fallen deathly ill and needed a very long time to rest and recover. Later on, there was very little news of Kang Shu at all. She also seemed to have disappeared, completely and even Nan Wanshin did not manage to catch a glimpse of her despite his many visits to the deep sea realm. When the entire Ten Directions Deep Sea Realm had fallen into Kang Shitin's hands, Kang Shu started slowly fading into obscurity. In fact, even the occasional rumor about her was that she had died from illness. Speaking of which, Kai Anyinger's golden eyes narrowed, slightly as she stared straight at Kai, Wu Ai Ao. Even I have never seen Kang Shu and I would have forgotten that name if you hadn't brought it up. So where did Kai Wu Ai Ao even find out about it? And why was she so confident that she was still in the Ten Directions Deep Sea Realm? She may very well have grabbed hold of Kang Shitin's true weakness this time. And it might even be his only true weakness. The gloomy light in Kai An Yinger's eyes trembled slightly as she said, This woman really is mind numbingly terrifying sometimes. She even suspected that Kai Wu Ai Ao had secretly wiggled her way into Kang Shitin's soul a long time ago. Devil Master, Devil Queen. Where do we go now? Fin Daiki asked as he took a step forward. Kai Wu Ai out turned to face Fin Daiki and let out a soft and dreamy sigh. Chapter 1867, Black Dust A vast cloud of dust and smoke silently settled over the deep sea divine region. The northern region profound practitioners whose devilish blood had been boiling as they prepared to trample over the western divine region, were finally allowing the battle el lust and malice to bleed from their bodies. It was clear that Kai Wu Ai Ao's current strategies all revolved around, avoiding battle. She did not want the core forces of the northern divine region to sustain any further damage. However, she also wanted to make sure that the stark hand that currently covered the entire god realm continued exerting its oppressive pressure. In fact, she wanted it to exert even more pressure. It was clear she was far better at controlling people than killing them. Of the western and, southern king realms who had surrendered, either willingly or otherwise, Kai Wu Ai Ao had used different methods to squeeze every bit of utility she could out of them. But she had also made sure that they still remained firmly under her iron fist. The deep sea divine region was already surrounded by deep sea profound ships that were waiting outside of it. This also included the Blue Sea Fierce Shark, who had left first with all the members of the Deep Sea Realm's royal bloodline. The surprise Kai Wu Ai Ao had sprung on everyone, Kang Xu, was also among those on the Blue Sea Fierce Shark. However, she still had not made an appearance. That was fine with Yun Che, as he had no interest in her whatsoever. He didn't even get Kang Shitin to call her over so he could see what she looked like. A bunch of black profound darks had landed in the center of the deep sea divine region, and the dark profound practitioners started to load their sorely wounded bodies onto them. They also brought with them the remains of their kinsmen and battle honors which would last until the end of eternity as they prepared to return to the northern divine region. However, they would soon return with even more, of their kinsmen. After all, how could they be absent from Yan Che's grand coronation ceremony? The Blue Dragon of the West and Shu of the South. Two people whom you have absolutely no relationship with or feelings for, one of whom you have never even seen before, can be forcefully made into your concubines just like that. This is what it means to be an emperor. Kai Wu Ai Ao came to stand by Yun, Che's side before she continued her leisurely discourse. No matter whether it is a living person or a dead object. As long as you have sufficient reason and they have sufficient worth, you can seize them as you please and no one will be able to defy you. I've only ever wanted the status that comes with this position. Not a single ripple had appeared on Yun Che's face as he absorbed Kai Wu Ai Ao's words. As for what comes next. How about this? You deal with the big things and I'll deal with the little things? 
Kai Wu I Ao said with a charming laugh. In truth, Long Bei was already dead and Yun Che had even taken key figures from every divine region as concubines, so there really weren't any big things that was left for Yun Che to deal with. I'll have to trouble and burden you then, Yun Che said in a rather guilty voice. There was no one else under the heavens besides Kai Wu I Ao that he could wholeheartedly entrust his burdens to. Kai Wu I Ao's alluring eyes curved into lovely crescents as her cherry lips twitched up into a most bewitching smile. This humble concubine doesn't deserve such words from the devil master. A successful emperor is most proficient at using other people, and isn't this humble concubine also someone under your command? Dot. As Yan Che stared into Kai Wu I Ao's eyes, his own eyes grew unfocused and distant, and he unwittingly stretched out a hand to touch her face. It was at this time that Hua Jin's voice suddenly rang from outside the hall. Master, Kang Shiden seeks an audience with you. Yan Che's hand froze in midair before ever making contact with his target. After that, he immediately turned around and said, I'll go out and take a look. He descended from the World Dragon City and into the midst of the dark profound practitioners who were preparing for their departure. All of them, whether near or far, immediately kneeled before him. He would not be able to tell how the profound practitioners of the other divine regions would, regard him after he became the Emperor of the God Realm, but he could be sure of one thing. The Northern Divine Region's loyalty towards him, a loyalty that transcended even belief and conviction was something that would perhaps endure for all eternity. Dakey, he called out. Finn Dakey's figure quickly drew near to Yun Che. He bowed deeply at the waist and said, What instructions does the devil, master have for me? Yun Che raised a hand and a jade magatama that flashed with a gloomy black light appeared above it. As Finn Dakey's eyes started to violently tremble, the magatama slowly floated towards him. It is also the right time to return this burning moon exquisite devil jade to your realm. Yun Che said solemnly. The core of the burning moon's strength has practically been cut to, zero, and the heavy burden of rebuilding it will now fall on your shoulders. Finn Dakey extended a hand that was trembling with uncontainable excitement. He very carefully took hold of the core of the burning moon's divine inheritance and stared at it blankly for a very long time. Then he kowtowed towards Yun Che once again and said in a quavering voice, Before this Dicky dies, I will definitely, make sure that the Devil Master will see a whole and reborn Burning Moon realm once more. People who can perfectly inherit the Burning Moon divine power can only be encountered by fate and luck. However, the current Burning Moon cannot afford to rely on this lengthy and uncertain method. Find a few people from your burning moon bloodline whose bloodline is pure enough and whose innate talent is, high enough. I will naturally ensure that their bodies will become perfectly compatible with the burning moon divine power they are to inherit. As for the rest, it will all depend on your own efforts. And the luck of the burning moon realm. The gratitude on Fendaki's face multiplied as he count how to yunch a. The burning moon. Thanks the Devil Master for his blessing and favor. We thank the Devil Master for his blessing and favor. You may leave. Finn Dakey turned around and left, tears of gratitude streaming down his weathered face. Yan Wu, Yun Che called out another name. After Yun Che used his light profound energy on her, Yan Wu's external wounds had disappeared in a few short days and she had recovered from about 60% of her internal injuries. It also seemed like she, had grown up a fair bit after Yan Tangxiao's death. Devil Master. She stopped in front of Yun Che and inclined her delicate head in deep respect. Yun Che slowly extended a hand towards Yan Wu and a broken piece of pitch black jade, no bigger than half the size of a fingernail, could be seen resting in the palm of that hand. After a brief moment of confusion, Yan Wu's body suddenly stiffened as, if she had been struck by lightning. Both her hands flew to her mouth as the sorrow that had started to recede once more rushed back to her face, her resolute and focused eyes instantly flooding with tears. I searched for several days, but I could only find this, Yun Che said in a gentle voice. It still contains a bit of his aura. I originally wanted to hold on to it as a keepsake of him, but, after thinking about it, I think that it should belong to you. 
This tiny piece of shattered jade was part of the pitch black jade button that Yan Tengxiao always wore around his waist. Yan Tengxiao had burned up his body and soul, so he had turned into grey ashes when he had died. After that, even those ashes had been blasted to the four winds by an enraged white rainbow dragon god, so none of it could be found. As such, this small piece of shattered jade was the only thing left of him. Yan Wu stretched out a hand to take the piece of jade. She pressed her hand to her heart and remained silent for a good long while. Over the last few days, she had frantically ransacked the battlefield in search of any remains of her father, but she couldn't even find a shred of cloth. As a result, this, tiny piece of jade, which had accompanied her father for many years and still contained a shred of his aura, was currently giving her the hope and comfort she so desperately needed. The current Yama realm is undoubtedly at the weakest and lowest point in its history. However, such a burden has now fallen on your shoulders. As a woman, this must be something far too cruel for you, but aside from, you. Devil Master, please do not worry. When Yan Wu finally raised her head to look at him, all the tears had disappeared from her eyes. I will not let anyone look down on Yan Tang Xiao's daughter. MMMM. Yan Che gave a small nod of his head. As he patted Yan Wu's shoulder comfortingly, the only thing he felt was a fragile weakness that caused his heart to ache for her. Now that he had, addressed Yan Wu, it was Huo Tenxing's turn. Desolate Calamity Realm King, when you return home, I want you to personally hand over the bodies of Jian Mu Ai and his son to the Imperial Heaven Realm. After that, choose at least 30 people of good potential from the juniors of the Imperial Heaven's royal bloodline. I will personally groom them. Kang Shitten entered the main palace of the, World Dragon City. Once he saw Kai Wu Ai Ao, he immediately dropped to his knees and spoke in an earnest voice, Devil Queen, I beg you. Please spare Xu. Oh? Spare? Kai Wu Ai Ao graced Kang Shitten with a smile that didn't seem like a smile. What do you mean by those words? Kang Shitten's head remained bow as he said, Shu's life has been one of misfortune and sorrow. The biggest reason that I, gritted my teeth and, snatched away the throne from my father was to protect her. Given her extremely frail body, even surviving until this day required several miracles. She simply can't bear any heavy burdens, much less succeeding me as God Emperor or becoming a royal concubine of the Devil Master. I beg that the Devil Queen choose someone else. As long as it's not you, anyone else from the Ten Directions Deep, Sea Realm will do. I will also swear my eternal loyalty to the Devil Master and Devil Queen if you just accede to this plea of mine. Kai Wu Ai Ao's devilish eyes half narrowed as gloomy light spilled out of them. After that, she suddenly let out a low laugh. Ha, this is a sight I thought I'd never see. Given your intelligence, Kang Shitten, you should know that the more you're worried about, something, the less worried you should look. If you lay all your cards on the table like this, aren't you simply laying bare all your weaknesses to this queen? Kang Shitten slowly lifted his head to look at her before saying, it is the person who attempts to be clever in front of the devil queen that is the true fool. Take a guess then. Do you think that I will really change my mind? Before, Kang Shitten even had an opportunity to reply, Kai Wu Ai Ao continued, There's no need for you to answer. Since you already know that I've made up my mind, you should also know that I won't change it. But what you are truly asking for is not for this queen to change her mind. No, you are asking for a promise from me. That's right. Kang Shitten did not deny her words. Indeed, attempting to hide, something from Kai Wu Ai Ao or trick her was simply a fool's errand. This humble Shitten dares not ask for this promise from the Devil Master, so my only alternative is to turn to the Devil Queen. I swear that I will definitely serve you with loyalty from now onward and even death will not sway my heart. HMPH, loyalty is never something that can be expressed with one's lips. Kai Wu Ai Ao's body shimmered and she had already moved past Kang Shitten. As she slowly strode toward the palace doors, her faint devilish voice rang in Kang Shitten's ears. If Kang Shu didn't exist, do you think that this queen would dare to put such trust in you? However, it is precisely because of this that Kang Shu will live a good life from now on. To ensure your loyalty and devotion, 
we will have no choice but to treat her well, right? Furthermore, the Devil Master's light profound energy will grant her a new lease on life. She will be able to escape the pains and illnesses that have plagued her for her entire life and she will also be able to perfectly inherit the deep sea divine power. What's more, our Devil Master has always despised the bullying of women, so you need not fear that she will come to any harm. In fact, the status she will achieve at the Devil Master's side will depend entirely on her own actions. However, even if she has no desires and does not feel the compelling need to fight for the Devil Master's attentions, she will now be able to live proudly and openly like everyone else. But unlike everyone else, she will also have a status that places her far above most of the universe. Isn't this far better than the life she was living before? Kang Shin remained on his knees as he turned to face the Devil Queen. However, Kai Wu Ai Ao had already vanished from sight. He still knocked his head against the ground and said in a quavery voice, I thank the Devil Queen for granting my wish. Devilish might, weak points, handicaps, and a heavy debt of gratitude. Kang, Shitten knew that he, the previous God Emperor Shitten, could forget about ever escaping the palm of Kai Wu Ai Ao's devilish hand. The only thing left for him to do now was to get rid of all the filth that should not exist in Yan Che's universe. Dash, after several days had passed, all of the black profound ships took to the skies. It was time for the northern region profound practitioners to make their way back home. Of the large army of darkness that had accompanied Yan Che out of the northern divine region, only Kai Wu Ai Ao, the three Yama ancestors, and the nine witches remained. So where are you headed off to next? Mugzuanian asked. Well, naturally it's the dragon god realm, Kai Wu Ai Ao replied with a small chuckle. I mean, how could we miss the opportunity to plunder the number one, king realm that has reigned imperiously over the rest of the god realm for the last million years? Kalan Emperor, it's your turn to be the bad guy this time. This is honestly a pretty lucrative job. Even stealing 10 or 20 percent will net you a grand fortune. So I believe that the Kalan Emperor has no reason to refuse, right? The Kalan Emperor hurriedly replied, I wouldn't dare. I, wouldn't dare. Every blade of grass on the Dragon God realm belongs to the Devil Master. How could this old man dare to take even one of them for himself? Xuanian, come with me. It won't take too long. After that, I'll accompany you back to the Snow Song realm. Yun Che's body unconsciously leaned towards Mu Xuanian. But he was immediately pulled back by a vicious tug from Kai and Yinger. No, Mu Xuanian shook her head. Benny An has been mourning me for several of years, but I simply wasn't able to show myself or meet her during that time. Now that everything has come to a close, I need to immediately head back to comfort her. Then. Casey, you. I want to make a trip to the Star God Realm, KZ whispered. The jade box in her hands contained the remains and possessions of the six Star Gods. It's also about time for me to release the dragons of absolute beginning from their duty. Mian, you. Father has sent me dozens of sound transmissions over the last few days, so I'll be accompanying my sister back to the Glazed Light Realm. If I don't, I think Father will be worried sick. Shui Mian said as she stuck out her tongue at him. Yun Che? Underscore, when danger imperiled, him, none of them were willing to stray a single step from his side, whether he knew it or not. However, now that no power in this world could threaten Yun Che any longer, they could finally lay down the heavy burden in their hearts. God Emperor, Kai and Bing Zhu said. Your vital energy is sorely wounded and you are in urgent need of some quiet and rest. Allow us to escort you back to the Brahma, Monarch God realm. No, Kai and Yinger replied in a cold and calm voice. I will accompany the Devil Master to the Dragon God realm. Moreover, I will recover even faster if I am at the Devil Master's side. There's no need for you to meddle. Yes, Kai and Bing Zhu could only obey. I want you to enter Uncle Gu's body in the Brahma Heaven tomb. Also, Kai and Yinger's voice suddenly grew hushed as, she stole a look at the distant Kai and Wugu. Make sure to take care of that old man. Don't you worry, God Emperor. A very faint smile appeared on Kai and Bing Zhu's face. 
Before too long, the oars of all who were present started streaking off in different directions. Dust no longer chaotically swirled in the wind. It started silently falling back down to the ground, but now, this dust had, quietly been dyed a deep black color. No one dared to predict. Chapter 1868, Zai, Yan. The Western Divine Region, the Dragon God Realm. The Dragon God Realm used to have the nine dragon gods, 34 dragon sovereigns, and 308 master dragons. They also had the supreme dragon monarch reigning over them and the secret protection of the five venerable wither dragons. This was a strength that everyone in the universe would think was, unshakable. However, not even a single master dragon survived today. The million-year supremacy of the dragon god realm had been toppled in a single day, and this toppling had been completely irrevocable. Once Yun Che had given that merciless command to exterminate the entire dragon god line, they did not even have a chance to catch their breath, much less revive their fortunes one day. A king, realm with no divine masters was like an old tiger whose fangs and claws had been pulled and whose bones had been broken. Even if their reputation still remained, they were already nothing more than harmless jackals. When the Blue Dragon Realm and Kylan Realm return with his order of obey or die, the Emperor Kai Realm, who a Dragon Realm, and myriad manifestations God Realm could not even muster, up the will to rebel. The cold and hard truth was that they simply had no choice in the matter. Matters were even simpler when it came to the Dragon God Realm. The Kylan realm simply swept in and took over the core of the Dragon God realm, the most sacred and exalted location in the God realm, the Dragon God domain itself. The entire Western Divine region was still shaking from the aftermath of, all of these actions. If it had been Yunche or Kai Wu Iao who had led this incursion, the rest of the Star Realms in the Western Divine region could have banded together to fight a common foe, briefly forming some resistance. However, the ones who had come to do the Devil Master's bidding had been the Kylan Realm and the Blue Dragon Realm, the two king realms with the best reputation in the, Western Divine region. This not only dealt a huge blow to their psyche, it also made it far easier for them to accept their defeat and subsequent submission to Yun Che's rule. Meanwhile, even as the Western region was reeling in shock, Yun Che and Kai and Yinger had arrived at the Forbidden Land of Samsara. A huge barrier lay in front of them and the dragon god aura that emanated from it was, strong enough to make everyone in a 5,000 km radius feel as if an entire mountain range was pressing down on their backs. One could well imagine just how much power Long Bay had lavished on this barrier. Yun Che's eyes stared at the barrier fixedly. Even though he had already accepted the worst possible outcome, his heart was still beating like a drum in his chest. Can you open, it? Kai and Yinga asked as she pursed her lips, her words pulling him out of his reverie. Yun Che took a step forward, phoenix flames igniting on his left hand and golden crow flames igniting on his right. Both divine flames merged together in the darkness, instantly becoming those peerlessly dreadful devil flames of eternal calamity. He directly hurled those flames at the dragon god barrier, Chie, Chie, Chie. As the soul-tearing sounds of the barrier being consumed rang in the air, Yun Che slowly sank his hands into it. After that, his brow dipped an exertion as his flaming arms pulled the barrier apart. Crack. A long crack was torn through the dragon god barrier. The devil flames of eternal calamity continued to gnaw away the edges of the crack, preventing it from repairing, itself. Yun Che's brow suddenly furrowed even more at this moment. Kai and Yinger's figure slipped through the crack as quick as lightning. However, when she turned back, she saw that Yun Che was still standing outside the barrier. He looked as if he was pondering something as he held the crack open. What's wrong? Kai and Ying asked. Yun Che stepped through the crack before suddenly saying, I, can still sense Long Bei's dragon soul inside this barrier. After Long Bei had died, the dragon soul he had suffused into the barrier started to swiftly dissipate. However, enough of it remained that Yun Che could clearly sense it. That's normal. Kai and Yinger wasn't the least bit surprised by Yun Che's words. He was covering up such a huge secret, so it would be strange if Long Bei had not, 
infused his soul into this barrier. Yun Che's eyebrows still remained knitted together. After a short and pregnant pause, he asked, Kai Anying, are there any methods that will allow someone to slip into this kind of soul infused barrier undetected? Kai Anyinger stared at him as she lapsed into deep thought. After that, she replied, From what I know, there are three possible methods. The first is to use the Eternal Heaven God Realm's Great Void Cauldron. As the strongest spatial artifact of this era, slipping through a soul infused barrier shouldn't pose a problem to it, no matter how many layers there are. The second is a special spatial profound technique from the Purple Micro Realm called the Prime Purple Micro. However, I cannot guarantee that the Great Void Cauldron can, slip through a soul-infused barrier of this level undetected. As for the Prime Purple Micro technique, it's a skill that no one in the Purple Micro Realm has been able to cultivate for 200,000 years. The third is naturally the World Piercer that Shui Mian currently owns. As a profound heavenly treasure and the undisputed strongest spatial divine artifact in the history of the, primal chaos, an artifact that can even switch planetary objects across the universe, penetrating a mere soul infused barrier like this one is nothing more than child's play. When he had told Kai Wu Ai Ao the whole truth, Kai Anyinger had been there as well. Unfortunately, Kai Anyinger's reply had not dispelled the doubts and suspicions in Yun Che's heart. He asked, the Moon God Realm doesn't, have any similar secret spatial techniques, correct? Kai Anyinger finally understood the source of Yun Che's doubts. So that's what's bothering you. I remember you telling me that it was Zai Akinayu who told you about Shin Zai's death. So you're wondering why Zai Akinayu would be able to figure this out even though Long Bei had personally set up a soul infused barrier around this area, right? Yun Che. HMPH. There's nothing strange about that, Kai Anyinger said with a cold snort. Every king realm has their own deeply hidden secrets and trump cards. It wouldn't be strange if the moon god realm possessed some sort of secret spatial art or hidden spatial artifact that no one else knew about. This is especially true for that woman Zayak in Ayu. She possessed two extremely unique, traits, the heart of snow glazed glass and the nine profound exquisite body. So it wouldn't be surprising even if she performed feats which transcended all logic and common sense, much less snuck into Long Bay's barrier without a trace. This is one point which she really does share with you. Yun Che shook his head to shake off any unnecessary thoughts. Forget about it. It's not important, anymore. Let's go. They soon reached the forbidden land of Samsara. However, the light barrier that had been shielding the forbidden land of Samsara for several hundred thousand years had now grown as thin as mist. In fact, it looked so fragile that even a small storm could completely disperse it. When Yanche reached out to touch the barrier, his finger instantly shrank back the moment he made contact with it. What lay behind this fading light barrier would undoubtedly destroy all of his hopes and fantasies in the cruelest manner possible. After he steeled himself, Yun Che walked through the light barrier and stepped into the forbidden land of Samsara. It was so barren that it made his heart ache. He no longer saw the birds or butterflies flitting through the air, no longer saw those, rays of sacred light flash through the air, no longer saw the wondrous garden of herbs and flowers that used to fill the land. Everything was ruined, withered, and dead. Ha oo oo. Yun Che closed his eyes and slowly exhaled. Even though she was trying her best to stifle her voice, He Ling's stricken sobs could be heard through the sky poison pearl. When he had first arrived in this place, he had, felt as if he had been dropped into some fantastical and ephemeral dreamscape of wondrous beauty. Today, it felt as if he had been rudely roused from that dream. And the dreamscape had been completely and utterly shattered. Kai Anyinger opened her mouth to say something, but when she sensed Yun Che's heavy heart, she simply couldn't bring herself to say anything. It was only after a long time, had passed that Yun Che opened his eyes and slowly walked to the center of the forbidden land of Samsara. The place which had been a dream within a dream. The bamboo hut had been reduced to a pile of withered bamboo. The ground, which had once been filled with celestial herbs and spirit flowers, was now filled with grooves and cuts. It was clear that it had been hit by a huge force. However, a, 
very faint thread of spiritual energy emanated from the broken and withered verger. Yun Che's eyes bulged as he swiftly ran forward. Soon, an exceptionally charming looking but weirdly shaped bunch of flowers appeared in his vision. As he carefully stepped through the bed of flowers, Yun Che's eyes froze on a dried up batch of blood on the ground. The faint thread of spirit energy was the light, energy aura that was unique to Shinsai. He slowly bent down and carefully scooped up that blood stained patch of dirt. After that, he poured it into a jade container. Kai and Yinger quietly followed behind him. Even though she had always used the fact that Shen Zai had come onto him first to insult and ridicule her. This had comforted her during the time Yun Che had used her as a sex slave while, bringing a perverse sort of joy to her heart, however, the current mood and situation had also caused her to fall into a somber silence. She simply wasn't able to throw any of her usual barbs at a time like this. Shen Zai, Yun Che whispered. You weren't the Dragon Queen. Even if you are no longer in this world, I will never allow any future records concerning you to be stained with the title of Dragon Queen. Even though I never found, out whether you even had any feelings for me, or if you were simply using me to achieve some sort of arcane goal. Even though I never even figured out who you really were. None of these things are important to me any longer. You are my woman. And that is the only thing I can be sure of something that even you cannot deny. The future generations will forever remember that you were. Emperor, Yun's concubine Sai. Yun Che's voice had started to tremble. Unless you appear before me and reject what I have said, I will take it. That you have agreed to this as well. As he finished whispering those words, Yun Che closed the jade container. No one knew if he was simply talking to himself or making a vow. HMPH. Kai Anyinger gave a cold snort in her heart. He hadn't even properly ascended, to the throne yet, but yet another name had been added to his harem. At this time, Yun Che suddenly sensed something. He swiveled around to look at the pile of withered bamboo that had fallen on the ground. He could faintly sense a very thin aura of light profound energy emanating from that place. His body suddenly spun around as he instantly appeared beside the pile of withered bamboo. Now that. He was so near this pile of ancient bamboo, Yun Che knew that he had not been mistaken. However, this light profound energy aura was simply far too weak. If he did not possess light profound energy himself, there was no way he would have detected it. Furthermore, this light profound energy was not originating from that pile of withered bamboo. It was coming from something buried beneath it. Oh, what did you find? Kai Anying asked. Yun Che did not say anything. He merely spread his hand and carefully reached into the ground with a thread of power. Bang! A muffled explosion rang out in the air as a neat hole that was about 30 meters deep appeared. Yun Che made a grabbing action with his hand and something shot up from the ground and into it as dust swirled in the air. It was a, simple bamboo tile. A very elegant Zai had been carved on the surface of the tile. One. He immediately recognized this as Shin Zai's handwriting. As his finger traced the character, he sensed a faint thread of light energy emanating from it. Zai? Kai and Yinger whispered. However, this light energy aura was not the only one of its kind. Yun Che's left hand sank down and another hole was drilled in, the ground. After that, an identical bamboo tile flew into his left hand. This time, the character carved on the tile was Yun and it was just as elegant and beautiful as the other one. Light radiated from it as well and one could almost sense the warm emotions flooding through her heart when she carved those words. Yun. Sai Yun. Yun Sai. Sai Yun. Wishing for Yun. Kai and Yinger's eyes narrowed, before she let out a soft laugh. I had always believed that Shen Zai had simply used you as a toy but it seems like she really did feel something for you. This wishing for Yun was truly carved with anxious longing and fulsome affection. Hey! 2. You're not allowed to insult her, Yun Che said as he slowly closed his hands over the bamboo tiles. Wishing for Yun. To think that she had actually, held such feelings towards him after he left this place. Was that fantastical year really not just her using him? HMPH. I'm praising her here, Kai and Yinger retorted in a much softer voice. Let's go. 
Yun Chi did not continue to linger in the place. Before too long, he left the forbidden land of Samsara together with Kai and Yinger and stood in front of the crack he had created in Long, Bei's barrier. He did not forcefully tear down the barrier that Long Bei had built as this was the place where Shen Zai had once dwelled. Even if she did not live here anymore, he still did not wish for any outsiders to disturb the place. The moment he exited the barrier, Yun Che received a sound transmission from Hua Jin. Reporting to the Devil Master. Master said that she discovered some, interesting findings when she was sorting through the legacy of the Dragon Gods. She requests that you pay a visit to the Dragon God domain when you find the time to do so. What happened? Kai Anying asked. Yun Che grabbed her arm and said, Let's go to the Dragon God domain. The Dragon God realm managed to accumulate resources for a million years as the ruler of this universe, so they, had better. Chapter 1869, The Ancient Records of the Dragon Gods The Eastern Divine Region, the Snow Song Realm The God Realm was still trembling in the aftermath of Yun Che's actions. The northern part of the Eastern Divine Region had been one of the first places to have been struck so the dark smoke of battle still lingered in the air. Only the Snowsong realm still remained cold, quiet, and tranquil, the same as it had been ever since ancient times. Mugzuanian slowly stepped into the Ice Phoenix sacred region. Nothing had changed but it seemed to her as if an entire lifetime had passed. Because her heart no longer solely belonged to this world wreathed in eternal snow. Snow fluttered wildly in the air as blizzard winds seemed to rush out to greet her. They danced around her like a bunch of ice, fairies, swirling around her robes like butterflies around a flower. As she followed after that most familiar aura, Mugzuanian's feet softly carried her to the Ice Phoenix Sacred Hall. A place she was most familiar with, a place that had once belonged to just her and Yun Che. Ah! A startled crying in the air as Mufixa shot to her feet and dumbly stared at the celestial figure who seemed to have stepped out of a dream and appeared in front of the sacred hall. Her icy eyes seemed to mist over as she softly cried out, Sect. Master. Mu Binion had been standing in front of that cold bond decorated with ice feather spirit flowers when she sensed that aura, her body spinning around as quick as lightning. The gazes of both sisters met, the sight of Mu Xuanian instantly drowning out, everything else in Mu Binion's eyes. Even her body seemed to have blurred into a crazily spreading icy mist. Big. Sister. With a soft cry, she dove into the arms of Mugzuanian, the person she had been longing for day and night. As she dove into her embrace, Mubinian started crying like a child. Icy tears welled up in her frigid voice, as little droplets of ice began to form on their robes. Dash, the western divine region, the dragon god realm the Dragon God Domain, the Dragon God Sacred Hall. In this place which was once the most exalted and sacred place in the God Realm, one could no longer see hide nor hair of the Dragon Sovereigns and Dragon Gods who used to walk freely in this area. The entire vast Dragon God Domain didn't contain the figure of a single dragon. They had all been, expelled by the Kylan Realm days ago. The vast fortune that the Dragon God Realm had accumulated over a million years was mostly hidden beneath the Dragon God Domain. Innumerable barriers were being slowly broken down by the Kylan Realm as they inched their way toward their goal. Furthermore, this enormous fortune certainly wasn't something that could be counted in a short amount of time. Its, vastness far exceeded the average imagination. The Dragon God Realm truly lives up to its name. In just a few short days, the amount of resources I've already counted has exceeded the total amount that the three king realms of the north have. Kai Wu Ai Ao picked up a spatial jade in the shape of a pearl as she continued in her slow and unhurried manner. Just picking a few treasures from this place, would allow me to hold a dozen grand coronation ceremonies, ones which would be so lavish and extravagant that they'd echo down through the ages. It looks like the number I had previously estimated was far too small. The difference between our northern divine region and the other three divine regions was truly like the difference between heaven and hell. The poverty of the northern divine, region juxtaposed with the wealth and plenty of the three other regions. 
This incredibly large gap in resources would trigger the wrath of any dark profound practitioner, and Kai Wu Iao was no exception. HMPH. Kai Anyinger gave a cold snort as she shot her a glance. You are about to become the exalted empress of the entire god realm, someone who possesses unparalleled divine might. Everything, in the universe is yours to control and use, so saying such things right now truly is boring and pointless. Kai Wu Iao replied in a soft and graceful voice, compared to being empress, I'd rather be an imperial concubine who can serve the devil master without any worries or cares, someone who can simply focus on flirting with him and striving for his favor. Who cares if I'd be just a simple, concubine? She batted her alluring eyes at Kai Anyinger. Kai Anying, if it strikes your fancy, how about I let you be empress instead? TSK. Kai Anyinger turned her jade face away from Kai Wu Iao without replying. Ahem. Yun Che let out a rather awkward cough before asking, Devil Queen, you said you made a rather interesting discovery. What was it? The fact that Kai Wu Iao had been so anxious as to get Hua Jin to send a sound transmission to him meant that this definitely wasn't an ordinary discovery. Kai Wu Iao stretched out both hands before she waved them gracefully in the air. A cluster of black light appeared before dispersing, revealing a floating ancient tome the color of dark bronze that was about one and a half meters long and wide. The ancient tome radiated a dense and heavy draconic aura. However, what was shocking about this tome was not the denseness of its draconic aura, it was how ancient it was. It was so ancient that it gave Yunche the feeling that it shouldn't even exist in this present era. Kai Anyinger's eyes flashed as she asked, could it be? The Dragon God Secret Tome? No, if it was the Dragon God Secret Tome, how would I dare to summon my lord, Devil Master in such a hasty fashion? Kai Wu Iao replied. This ancient tome has been bound by nine seals and each seal contains the lingering traces of the Dragon Monarch's soul. If he wasn't already dead. There's no way that I would be able to break all of these seals in such a short time. Furthermore, what this ancient tome records isn't the history of the Dragon God realm. It is the history, of the ancient Dragon God tribe. What? A look of shock appeared on Kai and Yinger's face and even Yun Che's eyes bulged when she said those words. An ancient secret record? And it was something that the ancient Dragon Gods had left behind? Kai Wu Iao gently pushed the ancient tome toward Yun Che. I've already flipped through most of it. What is recorded in it is the history of the ancient, dragon god tribe and many other ancient secrets that should have died with the era of the gods. She looked at Yun Che. These ancient secrets are nothing but information to other people, but they may be of some particular help to my lord devil master, so you might want to peruse it slowly. He very quickly dispelled the barrier around the book. After that, both Yun Che and Kai and Yinger used a thread of profound energy that was as gentle as they could muster to slowly open this ancient record left behind by the dragon gods, a miraculous existence in and of itself. The first page of this ancient tome recorded the commandments of the dragon god tribe, and the second page recorded the divine titles of each era's dragon god and the key draconic figures during their era. Even though they were called the dragon god tribe, Every long and vast era of this tribe only had a single dragon god. Among the vast traces of the true gods, the two words dragon god were only less exalted than the names of the four revered creation gods. It was a divine title that transcended all the other god clans. As for the ancient dragon god tribe, this referred to the dragon races directly under the dragon god's command. It was a title that was crowned with the divine title of the dragon god but it was not one that their entire race adopted. As a result, the dragon gods of the current dragon god realm were not only disrespectful of the divine title of dragon god, it would have been viewed as the worst sort of blasphemy by the ancient dragon god tribe. The lifespan of the dragon gods, was extremely long. Though it was not as long as the creation gods, it definitely far outstripped all other living creatures. As a result, during the long and vast ancient era which encapsulated the entirety of the dragon god tribe's history, there were only ever six dragon gods. Yun Che's eyes fixed on the records of the very last dragon god. It was the primordial azure dragon who had bestowed, 
all of these gifts upon him. His name had been Long Yan. Even though the dragon gods had a very long lifespan, they also had an incredibly hard time reproducing. This was what was recorded in regards to the primordial azure dragon, from the moment the primordial azure dragon became the dragon god to the time he finally fell in battle during the war of the gods and devils, a full 30 millions, years had passed. However, he was only able to sire a single daughter. When he had obtained the dragon god's blood, dragon god soul and dragon god marrow back on the profound sky continent, the very last request the primordial azure dragon's soul fragment made of him was to find his daughter who had been sealed into the heaven punishing ancestral sword. This intense longing and worry had, persisted all the way until the present age, and he had only been able to rest once he had entrusted this task to the heretic god's successor. As it turned out, this mighty dragon god actually only had this one daughter during his entire life. After he gave a sigh heavy with emotion, the corner of Yanche's brow suddenly twitched. He only sired a daughter after 30 million years. Wait a minute. He had accumulated quite the harem himself over the years, and he had been sowing his seeds very diligently, but he only ever had one daughter, Wuxin. On the surface, he looked like he wasn't bothered by such a thing, he had actually been brooding about it all this while. Could it be that the root of his troubles had been the far too pure dragon god bloodline that he possessed? However, this ancient tome had not recorded his, daughter's true name. It only addressed her as princess. It was recorded that her personality was gentle and retiring, and that she was as beautiful as a heavenly flower. She was admired by the creation goddess of life Li Yuo, and she constantly made trips to the divine palace of life to accompany her. Yun Che's eyes lingered on this short passage concerning the dragon god's daughter for a, very long time. After that, he finally flipped to the third page of the ancient tome. However, this page did not record anything concerning the dragon god's history. Instead, the four creation gods, the heaven-punishing divine emperor, Mo Profound Treasure, the heaven-punishing ancestral sword, he was the head of the four mighty creation gods and his divine power was unparalleled. It was above, that of all the creation gods and devil emperors and even though he could not obtain the acknowledgement of the heaven punishing ancestral sword, he could still unleash its might. His personality was unbending and righteous in the extreme. He hated evil like it was a grudge. He never allowed relationships or feelings to bend his principles. He also was extremely repulsed by darkness profound, energy and he could not tolerate any god growing close to the devil race. The heaven-punishing crown prince, Mosu, was outstanding in both looks, temperament, and talent. None of the godchildren in the universe was his equal and the heaven-punishing divine emperor loved him deeply. However, Mosu violated a taboo that must never be violated, so Moe personally buried him in the abyss of, nothingness. His ruthless devotion to righteousness shocked the entire universe, but it also earned him universal praise and admiration. Yun Che's brow furrowed deeply. The tragedy of the heaven-smiting devil emperor and the heretic god had come at the hands of Moe even the war of the gods and devils, the event which had destroyed an entire era, was something that he had set the stage for, his extreme and unbending righteousness and hatred for evil were things that Yun Che had known about for a long time. However, he had never imagined that he was so unbending and principled that he would personally kill his own son for violating a taboo. And this was his most beloved son, whom he had personally made his crown prince, at that. He was even willing to be this cold-hearted and ruthless, to the beloved son he had named as his successor. In comparison, his ruthlessness toward Ji Yuan, Ni Zhuan, and Ni Ji was simply far too normal. In order to obtain the fragment of the ancestral divine art that was in the heaven-smiting devil emperor's possession, the heaven-punishing divine emperor lured her to the eastern border of the primal chaos. After that, he used the heaven-punishing, ancestral sword to tear a hole in the wall of primal chaos, before he unleashed its might once more to expel the heaven-smiting devil emperor and her heaven-smiting devil clan from the primal chaos. From then on, the four mighty devil emperors were reduced to three. This momentous event shook the devil race violently and caused strife and unease to spread through the world. 
After that, the heaven, punishing divine emperor engaged in a fierce and terrible battle with the creation god of the elements for reasons unknown. When the battle ended, the creation god of the elements abandoned his title of creation god. He titled himself the heretic god and went into seclusion forevermore. The heaven punishing divine emperor also went into a long seclusion after that battle. The dragon god visited him but was turned away outside the doors of his divine palace. Later, the princess returned home, but she heard the creation goddess of life's lament first. The heaven punishing divine emperor's vital energy had been exhausted and he was only left with a mere hundred thousand years left to live. It is suspected that he unleashed the might of the heaven punishing ancestral sword once again, during his battle with the creation god of the elements. The head of the true gods, the heaven punishing divine emperor, went to his rest. His life's pan reached its end and the last divine words he uttered were Mosu, his deceased son's name. The rest of the records regarding Moe were things that Yunche was familiar with. In fact, in some cases, the information he possessed contained more truth and was even more detailed than what had been recorded in this ancient tome. For example, Moe's purported purpose for meeting the heaven smiting devil emperor, the fragment of the ancestral divine art, had been a complete sham. The truth was that he wanted to completely extinguish all records of the taboo committed by her and the creation god of the elements. To think that the strongest creation god of ancient times died so early that he could not even participate in the war of the gods and devils, Kai Anyinger said in a mocking voice. Did killing his own child shorten his life's pen? Yun Chi did not reply. Instead, he continued reading the tome. Creation god of order, Psyche profound treasure, the eternal heaven pearl. He was the creation god that created and, maintained the laws of heaven, and preserved the balance of the universe itself. His personality was calm and aloof, and he constantly sought to ensure injustice and peace among the innumerable god clans. He hated all sorts of conflict and was fond of traveling the universe alone and acting independently. Even though he was a creation god, he did not build a divine palace nor did he have any divine, armies or divine guards at his command. The one who seeks to order the heavens and the earth must not have any selfish emotions or desires. These were the words that the creation god of order once said to the ancestral dragon god. Yun Che's lips screwed up. A creation god that did not allow himself to have any selfish emotions or desires. I wouldn't take that job even if it was offered up to me, on a silver platter. No wonder the moon gods star gods, and Brahma gods whose divine inheritances the king realms of the east inherited all served under Moe during the ancient era. It was actually because one of the mighty creation gods had chosen not to set up a divine palace or recruit any divine servants. He only had that eternal heaven pearl. Even though it had ended up founding the eternal, heaven god realm. Yun Che had still destroyed it in the end. However, the records of the creation god of order did not mention his death. So it was clear that he had only died after the dragon. Chapter 1870, Shadow of the Ancestral Sword Creation Goddess of Life, Lease You a Profound Treasure, Primordial Seal of Life and Death The creation god who bore the power of realm creation, life creation, and light divine energy. She was a kind merciful and compassionate soul who possessed the holy power that could save all living and non-living things in the world, and an outer and inner beauty that, transcended the limits of the immortal realm of creation itself. So great was her beauty that it was said that the ancestral god had bestowed three-tenths of the concept of beauty to the world, and the rest to Lee Yuo when creating the universe. Stars and moons were but as bright as withered dust before her divine presence. TCH Kai and Yinger snorted disdainfully as she chased Yun Che's gaze, not even the ancient dragon god tribe is immune to idolism, it seems. This level of exaggeration is wholly unnecessary. Yun Che subconsciously shot Kai and Yinger's face a look. If he were to judge by countenance alone, Kai and Yinger and Shen Zai were without a doubt the most beautiful women in the entire world, the kind that couldn't be surpassed even in one's dreams. While the scribe of Ancient records of the dragon god spared no effort in praising the supernatural beauty of the ancient goddess of creation, 
he didn't think that the ancient goddess of creation would be able to surpass Kai Anyinger or Shenzai in terms of countenance and figure even if she were to reappear in this world. Probably. Both the heaven-punishing divine emperor and the creation god of the elements were, madly in love with Li Xiuo, but their chase ultimately didn't bear fruit. In the end, the heaven-punishing divine emperor chose duty over love, for his lineage cannot end with him and made the empress of the heaven Luo divine race his queen. In just 10,000 years, his harem had swelled to a mass of 30,000 concubines. On the other hand, the creation god of the elements never gave up, so, he never found another partner. It truly was a shame that a god like him was alone until the very end. Yun Che sighed inside his head. The truth was. The creation god of the elements fell in love with the heaven-smiting devil emperor afterward, but their forbidden, no, taboo love was destined never to be known or blessed by the world. Their daughter most of all. Now that he thought about it, the one thing that still triggered the returned heaven-smiting devil emperor hard despite having experienced practically every form of mortal coil, was the fact that the heretic god used to be deeply in love with Li Yuo. After all, even she was a woman before she was a devil emperor. A terrible war broke out, and the universe suffered. To eliminate light divine energy once and for all, the nine, fiend devil emperor stole the primordial seal of life and death, reached dimensions, descended upon the divine palace of life and scattered the nine fiend devil poison. The divine palace of life fell. And the divine aura of life was never more. All the realms wept and raged at the death of the creation goddess of life. However, the body of the deceased Li Xiuo was never found. Perhaps it was, because her body gave off light divine aura, and the nine fiend devil race destroyed it out of fear. If Mo Yi was the first creation god to pass away naturally, then Li Xiuo was the first creation god to perish unnaturally. After all, her light divine energy was the power the devil race feared the most but her combat strength was also the weakest of the four creation gods and four devil emperors, according to the Ice Phoenix Divine Spirit, Li Xiuo was the most respected and loved creation god of all the creation gods. The Ice Phoenix Divine Spirit herself was forever proud that she once served under the creation goddess of life. The realms truly must have wept when news of her death spread far and wide. Creation God of the Elements, Niji One Profound Treasure World Piercer this line alone, told Yanche that even the Dragon God tribe wasn't aware that the Heretic God and the Heaven Smiting Devil Emperor had exchanged their heavenly profound treasures with each other. He was the creation God with complete mastery over the five elements, water, fire, wind, thunder and earth, and could transcend even the laws of the elements. He lived for battle and made it his duty to protect everything, that he believed was worth protecting. He was open-minded easygoing, unfettered by customs, and untouched by the arrogance of a creation god. He enjoyed exploring the realms and spreading his kindness everywhere. He was close friends with every dragon god to have ever lived, and our tribe owed him a favor that might not be repaid even in 10,000 lifetimes. He was extremely single-minded, when it came to love, and his love for the creation goddess of life was absolute. His loyalty never failed to impress the dragon gods. For an unknown reason, the creation god of the elements challenged the heaven-punishing divine emperor to battle at the heart of absolute beginning. Maybe it was because he was furious at the heaven-punishing divine emperor's act of exiling the heaven-smiting, devil emperor from the universe. It certainly broke the balance between the two races and caused no end of trouble later on. No one had the power to approach the battle, so no one knew the final outcome. After the battle, the creation god of the elements discarded his own title and began calling himself the heretic god. At the same time, he went into seclusion and almost never appeared to the world anymore. Even when the dragon god tried to pay him a visit, all they got was a request to leave. The dragon god once said this, the heretic god's sorrow is endless, and his heart is as lightless as dust itself. All that he seeks now is to be forgotten by the world. After the legendary battle, the heaven-punishing divine emperor's life span abruptly shortened by a drastic amount. It was, suspected that he had used the ancestral sword during the battle. If this is true, 
Does this mean that the divine power of the creation god of the elements actually exceeded the heaven punishing divine emperors? Also, it was a well known fact that unleashing the ancestral sword's power by force came at a massive cost of one's lifespan. Why did the heaven punishing divine emperor go so far just to defeat the creation god of the elements? Surely the title of the strongest god emperor wasn't worth that much. And so the heaven punishing divine emperor passed away, and the Hernet god secluded himself from the world. The creation god of order and the creation goddess of life never spoke even a word regarding the battle. The truth of the matter might very well remain hidden for eternity. Yan, Che sighed in his head again. The truth of that time was unknown even to the powerful dragon god tribe, and yet he, a person of the future, had come to know everything. In order to destroy a taboo that he absolutely couldn't tolerate, one that was created by the creation god of the elements and the heaven smiting devil emperor themselves, the heaven punishing divine emperor had deceived, broken, his own principles, and even sacrificed his own lifespan to unleash the ancestral sword. The battle between the heaven punishing divine emperor and the creation god of the elements had directly decided the fate of the forbidden existence that was Niji. Obviously, the heaven punishing divine emperor couldn't have imagined that he, the so called strongest god emperor of the universe, was, actually Nijuan's inferior. As it turned out, the devil god Forbidden Tom, the heretic god Arts, co created by the creation god of the elements and the heaven smiting devil emperor, was a power that transcended even the strongest creation god in the world. The irony that the heaven punishing divine emperor, the living symbol of the absolute divide between God and devil, must have felt when the realization struck him must have been unbelievable. After unleashing the ancestral sword to defeat the creation god of the elements, the heaven punishing divine emperor knew shame and accepted half a compromise. Niji's devilish soul would be eliminated, but not her divine soul. The truth of her origin would be forever hidden as well. Thus Niji became hunger and yore. Nijuan entrusted, hunger to the sword spirit god clan, but couldn't bring himself to kill her no matter what. Thus, he hid her in the darkest abyss of Blue Pole Star. And suffered an unimaginable amount of pain, sorrow, guilt, regret, powerlessness and disappointment every day. His bitterness ran so deep that he even discarded his title and secluded himself from the world once and for all. Nijuan must have visited the now princess of the sword spirit god clan, the eternally happy Ling Wanu, Honor, now and then, but he would never in a million years dare to visit Yor. Only he would know the true depths of his pain and sorrow. Kai Anyinger said, according to the current world's records, the official cause behind the great war between the gods and the devils was because the devil race had, taken the masterless heaven punishing ancestral sword for themselves. In reality, the true cause was the heaven punishing divine emperor himself. The fury of the devil race, the collapse of balance between the two races, the passing of one creation god and the seclusion of another. Even if the heaven punishing ancestral sword hadn't become the spark that lit the fire, something else would have, HMPH, how ironic. Even better, this self proclaimed emperor of the righteous way most likely thought that he had sacrificed himself for the betterment of the world. He would never even consider that he had made a mistake. Kai Anyinger snorted coldly. Zhuxuzi is but a child before this man. The four great creation gods recorded by the ancient dragon god tribe were without a doubt far more, detailed and accurate than the current world was, familiar with. Moreover, thanks to certain truths only he knew, he was able to paint a clearer picture of the creation gods in his head. Yun Che wordlessly flipped the ancient record to the fourth page. Just like before, this page didn't record the history of the dragon gods. It was about the seven great heavenly profound treasures. Yun Che's concentration immediately increased several fold, compared to before. The four great creation gods were nothing but ancient legends and forgotten dust at this point. The seven great heavenly profound treasures on the other hand were still well and existing in the present day. Every heavenly profound treasure except the heaven punishing ancestral sword had appeared at least once in the current universe. In fact, he was in possession of four of, them right now. The primordial seal of life and death, 
the eternal heaven pearl, the sky poison pearl, and the mirror of samsara. The world piercer was also in Shu Yimin's hands. The heaven punishing ancestral sword had never appeared in this world, and the evil infant's wheel of myriad tribulations was forever lost with jasmine. The first heavenly profound treasure, heaven punishing ancestral, sword birthed from the yang side of the heart of the primal chaos, it was the purest, strongest and most sacred divine sword in the entire primal chaos realm. It was the ancestor of all artifacts, and it was said to contain the divine power of the ancestral god themselves. It was strong enough to violate even the laws of the world. The heaven punishing ancestral sword had never had a true master, probably because it contained the ancestral god's divine power meaning that no one in the world was worthy of becoming its master. It allowed only Moe the heaven punishing divine emperor to carry it because the man had an upright soul. It was also how his title heaven punishing divine emperor came to be. The divine power of the ancestral god could only be wielded by the ancestral god, themselves. Even if the heaven punishing ancestral sword acknowledged Moe as its carrier, he couldn't use it without grave consequences. Using the heaven punishing ancestral sword by force would cost a creation god 30% of their lifespan, 90% for a god, an immediate annihilation for a mortal. Yun Che was shocked. A creation god was, to put it bluntly, almost immortal, and yet, it still cost them 30% of their lifespan to unleash the power of the heaven punishing ancestral sword just once. Moe had used the heaven punishing ancestral sword twice in his life. Once to exile the heaven smiting devil emperor and the 900 devil gods from the primal chaos, and once more to defeat the creation god of the elements who successfully cultivated the heretic god forbidden tome. That was 60% of his lifespan gone just like that. It was no wonder that he, the strongest creation god of that time, died sooner than anybody else. The cost only grew worse from there. A true god would lose 90% of their lifespan if they were to use the heaven punishing ancestral sword. Even an unusually young true god would be near death upon using it. The heaven punishing ancestral sword could slay any enemy, but the wielder would be near death as well. It was a true double edged sword. After the heaven punishing divine emperor had died, the heaven punishing ancestral sword had vanished for a time. When the heaven punishing ancestral sword suddenly reappeared at the heart of the primal chaos, the realms trembled, and the devil race, shook. The ancestral sword must not fall into the devil's hands, so the divine races who once served the heaven punishing divine emperor mobilized all their forces to protect the sword. But the devil race's assault turned out to be ten times more frantic than expected, and the resulting war was so terrible that universe itself was almost destroyed. The terrible war between the gods and the devils was lit by the emergence of the heaven punishing ancestral sword, but the dragon god said that it was but one of the many, many other sparks that could have lit the fuse. At that point, the devil race's hatred and resentment had deepened to the point where anything would have sparked the war. Our entire tribe had to participate in the war. Countless realms died, and blood dyed the skies red. The heaven punishing god race entrusted the heaven punishing ancestral sword to us so that they may fight without worry. When will the apocalypse end? Dot. In the end, the devil race discovered that we were hiding the heaven punishing ancestral sword. Countless devils emerged to battle our realms. Devilish poisons devoured countless lives, the sky turned black with devilish energy, and the stench of death was as thick as the abyss. The despair was unspeakable. The dragon god was grievously wounded, his kin has perished, and despair encroaches ever so closer. The princess took injuries that almost claimed her life, and even worse a devilish poison invaded her soul. The dragon god wept like a babe until suddenly, he shattered the dragon god's seal and released the wisp of, ancestral god divine energy contained within it. But instead of using it to slay the devils, he used it as a medium to seal the princess dying body into the heaven punishing ancestral sword and toss it into the well of samsara, however, to reclaim the heaven punishing ancestral sword, the crazed devils actually attacked the well of samsara until it was completely destroyed, and so the cycle, of rebirth came to an eternal end.
not even fate knows where the heaven punishing ancestral sword and the princess have gone, the line marked the end of the records regarding the heaven punishing ancestral sword. In fact, the latter paragraphs of the text, especially the last couple of lines, grew increasingly weak and disorderly until they were almost unrecognizable. Yunche didn't need to be there to know that the divine dragon who transcribed the ancient record was near death at the time. Unintentionally, the shadow of the heaven punishing ancestral sword cast a pall over the end of the era of gods and devils. And so the cycle of rebirth came to an eternal end. Yun Che stared at the line for a very, very long time. As it turned out, the legend of Samsara wasn't a legend after all, the cycle of rebirth was actually a real thing during the ancient times, and its medium, the Well of Samsara was guarded by none other than the Dragon God tribe. The Well of Samsara had been destroyed during the War of Gods and Devils and turned into a dead well. Since then, the cycle of rebirth was no more in this world. Yun Che had come into contact with a fake cycle of rebirth once while he was, still on the profound sky continent. Masterminded by Xuani Unwenchen, Fen Jukin had been forced to experience a millennium along Samsara of Eternal Night. However, Yun Che later discovered while reading the illusory devil tome of Eternal Night that the so called forbidden art of Samsara was really just a taboo way of sealing and grafting one's vitality and soul onto a chosen person. Not only, did the cruel process violate the natural order, its chosen hosts would always be missing some parts of their vitality and soul. It was why Fen Jukin became extremely manic, and why his life only seemed to be filled with tragedy. Even if he somehow survived one death, another would claim him all too soon. However, Yun Che had experienced a rebirth despite living in a world where the well of, Samsara was supposedly dead. It was even a special kind of rebirth that was completely different from the memories, records, and even the legends of Samsara. The Well of Samsara. The Mirror of Samsara. Right now, the well in the Forbidden Land of Samsara was none other than the ancient well of Samsara itself. However, it seemed to be a dead well that could never be re 